See you tomorrow. Yeah, locker rooms will open once the cooling off period ends for each team. Yeah. And then it's 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes. No, it, yeah, it's not when the game ends, it's when the cooling peri off period ends. Yeah. It's the, yeah, it, it, I don't know exactly because the cooling off period in, it starts when they get to the locker room. And so, yeah, the uh, winning team gets 15 minutes, uh, not advancing team, 25. Once again, a reminder, just everyone, a reminder on press conference flow. Uh, first two minutes will be an opening statement from the head coach. Next eight minutes will be questions for the student athletes, followed by an additional 10 minutes with the head coach. Uh, we, scheduled to appear for UConn are Gino Oriema, Leah Edwards, and Paige Beckers. For Duke, Carol Lawson, uh, Reagan Richardson, and Aluchi Ankanawa.
do you know I'm not being sponsored by Bassani? Quick reminders before we begin, as if silence all cell phones, no flash photography and no live video may be taken during the press conference. Uh, we'll take questions from the media room first and then we'll check in with the Zoom room. Please state your name and affiliation and who your question is directed towards before asking your question. This time, we have UConn on the dais, head coach Gina Oriana, and student athletes Leah Edwards and Paige Beckers. Coach, congratulations on the win. Uh, we'll you. begin with your opening statement. Uh, I don't know that I have, I don't know that I have one. Um, so I'll let you guys go right ahead with the questions for the, for the student athletes. All right, the floor is open. Let's start down here. Good shaper does not describe that philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Aaliyah, another dominant game from Paige. You said yesterday, you know, you watch her do it in practice every day. I just wonder, like, are there times on the court that she does something and you're like, dang, that was pretty impressive? Or do you just shrug and think, well, Paige is just being Paige? Um, I mean, I'm not really surprised when the ball goes in the hoop for her, but some of the moves that she gets um, leading up to the bucket is pretty impressive. But um, that's just how Paige plays basketball, and it's beautiful to watch. But um, yeah, she does what she does in games and practice. Michelle. Hi, Michelle Smith from the next. Aaliyah for you first, and then Paige. Aaliyah, you came off the bench um, after being on for a while. You had a big jumper, got a big offensive rebound. You felt like you had come back. Did you feel like when you came back into the game that you had to make a quick impact? Um, well, Coach drew up the play, told me to get a bucket, and that's what I did. And then um, I think down the stretch, we just all had to make plays, impact in different ways. It wasn't just me. It was a team effort, and I think that um, we could have made some better decision decisions, but you know we survived and we advanced. And Paige, for you, is this that game was super frenetic, bodies on the floor a lot. Is that a game where you feel your short bench more because it's just so physical and so I mean it was pretty hectic out there. Uh, yeah, I think I mean the game was very physical on both ends of the floor. Um, the pace was fast, um, both sides trying to push it. Um, so you, you feel it, but at this point of the season, um, you got to be mentally tougher. Um, everybody's got aches and, and boo-boos during this time, and it's just about who powers through it better, um, who's mentally tougher. Um, so it's just something we try not to really focus on. Can we get just a tiny bit more volume on the speakers, please? Next question. In the back. Uh, Vid Kumar with Texas Athletics. Uh, could you guys just talk about the, what the next 48 hours looks like for you, just the mental preparation for the next biggest game of your career? Um, tonight we'll be rest and recover, um, trying to get our bodies, take an ice bath, um, get treatment done, so trying to recover that way, get good sleep, and then tomorrow will be a lot of preparation. The next day will be preparation leading up to the game, but just balancing recovering with preparing for a great opponent and a great team. Um, on Monday. Alexa. Alexa Philpu, ESPN, for either or both of you. Uh, being able to hold Duke to only 18 made field goals and force 23 turnovers, what did you think was working so well in the defensive end, especially because you guys weren't you know, scoring in the 60s or 70s yourselves? I think uh, defensively we were just playing uh, smarter than we did on the offensive end. but. Um, I think that we took care of those possessions on the defensive end, made sure to make sure not to get them out of their flow. I think that we did a good job just um, disrupting and um, being effective that way. Do we have other questions for our student athletes in the back? Uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register. Paige, you said post game, you obviously don't get into the media, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchups and this and that, but just from a purely on-court standpoint, playing Juju on, on Monday, do, do you look at that and think, you know, that, that's a matchup I want to take on defensively to try and slow her down a little bit with everything that she can do for USC, or do you just kind of leave that to the game plan? Uh, leave it to the game plan. Um, 
let the scout be the scout. Um, I know with a great player like that, it's not an individual defensive assignment, but it's a team defensive assignment. So it's every, everybody's responsibility to try to limit her touches, limit her shots, um, contain her. Um, like a great player like that, it's best to not even let her get the ball. So I'm sure we'll work on it, um, go through it on the scout, um, and leave it up to the game plan. Back to Alexa. Paige, KK had a really impactful game on both ends. What did you see from her, and how did she really kind of rise to this moment? I just saw her being confident in her movements and what she wanted to do, the spots she wanted to get to on the floor on offense and defense, disrupting, um, just being KK, just being pesty, um, pushing the ball up the floor, getting into the lane, creating from there, um, and then pressuring the ball and getting deflections, getting steals. Um, on defense, so her just being confident, not thinking, and just playing her game. I thought she did a great job tonight. Any other questions for our student athletes? All right, we appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't know how much time's left. All right, we'll open it up to uh, questions for Coach Oriema. Alexa. Alexa Philpu, ESPN. Gino, did that, sp specifically the first half, did that remind you of the national title game against Stanford? <laughs> Is that one of those games? <laughs> uh, yeah, except uh, we were on the wrong end of that one, you know, in the first half. Um, You know, Duke's a terrific defensive team. Um, they do a tremendous job of um, uh, taking away some of your strengths and making you make, uh, make plays that are not necessarily scripted. Um, you have to make great reads and um, it was really hard in the beginning, you know, because you felt like uh, they have 13 points at halftime, and I felt like we should have 30. And, you know, it, it always comes back to get you when you leave a lot of points on the table. Um, but scoring was not going to be easy tonight. At both ends, they weren't going to have an easy time scoring against us, and we weren't going to have an easy time scoring against them. Um, and to one other question, that was it, you know, the, the fatigue factor became a big issue because uh, it forced us to change our game plan, you know, and like Paige was saying, we got up 20 because we just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. And then I felt like, okay, we need a, we need a breather here, or we're not going to be able to finish the game. And I think by doing that, we got a little bit, you know, kind of took a deep breath. You know, we were exercising, and then we decided to have a cigarette, and then we didn't feel like exercising anymore. So it was hard for us to get back into the flow of things. And um, But I knew scoring was going to be very, very difficult, very difficult on both ends. Gina, Michelle Smith from the next. Bringing Aaliyah back in, bringing her back into the game and having her hit that quick jumper and again that O board, that ended up being huge for you guys. She says you just told her to go in and get a bucket. I don't know that it works that way. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes dreams do come true, you know. Um, we had a play earlier coming out of a timeout uh, where we were going to isolate Aaliyah. And um, it was very simple. KK... Uh, KK, take the ball, pass it to Aaliyah, and get the hell out of the way. And um, we go out there, and KK goes, eh, I don't feel like doing that. And she just goes in and gets her shot blocked by three people, not just one. And uh, sometimes you wonder, you know, like whether I need an interpreter for these young guys. I know I just turned 70, but I think I still speak English. You know, I didn't revert back to, like my mom, when she got to a certain age, she reverted back to only Italian. I thought, I still speak English. I don't understand why that didn't translate very well. But we did feel like their pressure was so hard on, 
on our wings that Aaliyah was going to have some breathing room. And uh, I, I felt like she could either get a layup or get a wide open jump shot. Um, and thank God it, you know, it was a big shot, huge shot. Um, we've made we've made some big play, big plays the last two games when we really had to. I'm really, I'm really proud of that. Tim, Gino Tim Booth from the AP. Um, you talked about scoring being tough at both ends tonight. What did you feel like you guys did defensively really well, especially in the first half? Yeah, the first half I thought we were we were very disciplined, very active. And we're, we were quick to the ball. You know, I thought, I thought if we could take away a lot of the lanes to get to the basket and force a lot of jump shots and just really clog things up. Um, and we did a great job of that. Um, and I thought as the game went on, we either got mentally or physically tired. We stopped getting to our spots, you know. And, and they, they started to exploit those, those driving lanes. Um, you know, you, you, when you get to this point, you know, final eight games, sweet 16 games, nobody just gets down 15, 16 and says, ah, hell with it. You know, we'll get the next one. And there is no next one. So everybody plays their butt off to the end. So you knew it wasn't, you know, wasn't going to last the way we were making it look really easy there for a while in the third quarter. But um, we couldn't sustain it. We couldn't sustain it. Vic Kumar with Texas Athletics. Congratulations, Coach, on the win. Um, Thank you. You know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, the matchup against USC with Paige and um, just the one-on-one -on -one matchup. But looking at it in a bigger scheme, you've been here. You've done this before. So how do you prepare this team for in the next 48 hours once again just to really lock in and, you know, go out there and give their best effort? Um, kind of what I said. I mean, at this time of the year, you, um, you have um, – you're staring at the end of your season. So I think players play with a certain amount of – Desperation and passion, and um, you know, the, s some of our upperclassmen. They've played and they've lost in the Final Four, they've lost in the Sweet Sixteen, and they've lost the National Championship game. So they've ha they've had a lot of experiences throughout their four years here. So you know they. They, they understand that it's USC versus UConn, not Page versus Juju. Because if we try to make it that, and this has happened a lot, somebody on their team will get 30, and then we'll all go home and go, yeah, we lost, but we did a great job on Juju, man. Congratulations. You know, it, it's got to be our team versus their team and uh, see how it plays out, you know. And I'm sure they're not – you know, they're not out there thinking, um, you know, let's spend all our energy guarding Paige. Lindsay? Lindsay Schnell, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Gino, Paige has talked about, you know, last season she just was so emotional. She wanted so badly to play in the tournament and that she prayed a lot that she would be given that opportunity again. You've obviously helped a lot of players navigate being injured, but I wondered, how did you make sure that, you know, her spirit wasn't broken? The one thing that the one thing that Paige is very, very good at, which I think all great, great players and great leaders, they're, they're very, very great. They're very, very good at hiding the things that will make them look like they're struggling or suffering or they're uh, they're not confident anymore. Uh, woe is me mentality. They're very good at hiding it. And Paige would come to, to the uh, to a practice facility every day last year to do a rehab. And 
you know, watch practice or whatever, and she was always the most upbeat, positive person in the gym. You knew that when she, was, when, when, when she went home, she was a completely different person at home. You knew that it was killing her and tearing her apart. But great players like that, they, you know, they, they carry a light around with them, you know, because she's a, she's a positive player that shines light on other people. We all know people that they live in darkness, right? The minute they walk in a room, everybody just goes, ugh. You know, they just suck the life out of the room. She's the opposite. She shines light on everywhere she goes. But privately, yes, it tore her apart. Um, I only saw it manifest itself once. We were, we were playing at Tennessee. And, you know, you come to UConn, you know, you want to play in a Tennessee game. Even though it's not the same, it's still UConn, Tennessee, and it's at Tennessee. And, and I saw her break down in the locker room that game. That, that was the first time I had seen it. Um, so I, I know that playing in this tournament this year is why she worked so hard for 12 months to, um, to put herself in position to do this. Um, you know, players like her, the players in this tournament, you know, like every, every player, but players like her, Juju and Caitlin and Angel Reese, and, you know, you can name them, you know, Cardoza and all those great players that South Carolina has. They live for these games, you know. Regular season games are regular season games. But, you know, these kids, this is what they, this is what they dream of when they go to college and play basketball. And if their dream's taken away from them, it's like they're half a person. And some people are just miserable and let it beat them. And some people, they, they don't let that happen. And Paige is one of those people. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Coach, thank you very much, and we will see you tomorrow. I'm going to go bathe my drink in some ice and get a nice bath. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll have Duke momentarily. There has been a switch uh, for the Duke student athletes. Uh, Oconomo will not appear. Instead, it'll be Kennedy Brown. All right, joining us now from uh, Duke, head coach Carol Lawson, along with uh, student athletes Reagan Richardson and Kennedy Brown. Uh, coach, we'll begin with your opening statement. It wasn't our night tonight. Uh, thought UConn did a great job of executing uh, defensively what they wanted to do, and um, you know we struggled to score the ball all night. I thought defensively we. You know, played well enough to win. Um, that's a, obviously a high-powered offense. 
Um, it just we, we were out of sorts and out of rhythm on the offensive end and, uh, you know, just weren't able to until late, you know, get enough, get enough points on the board. Um, but as I told our team after the game, I'm just really proud of them, proud of the season we've had and, um, you know, all the, all the growth we've had. It's been amazing um, to coach this group and just really lucky um, to be able to, to be with them every day. It's been a joy and, um, you know, just fortunate to be at Duke and um, get the chance to coach, coach our, our whole team, but especially these two that are sitting up here with me. We're going to open it up to uh, questions from the student athletes. Start in the back. Uh, Avid Kumar with Texas Athletics. First of all, sorry about the loss. I know it's a really tough one. But, um, you know, with a loss like this, I just wanted to get just kind of your mindset at this moment. You know, how long are you going to take to just kind of reset at this moment before you come back and, you know, start working for next year again? Just talk about your mindset right now and how you're feeling. Yeah, it's uh, not a great feeling to lose like this, you know, but I'm super proud of this team. Uh, it was our all like first time being in the Sweet 16, so I feel like we're all just proud of ourselves. I feel like going into next year, um, I'm super pumped, super confident. Um, I'm just ready to get into the gym as soon as I can. Like, if it's probably not tomorrow, but like maybe the next cut, like a week or so. Uh, Tim Booth from the AP. For both of you, what did you feel like UConn was doing at the defensive end that were, was causing you guys the amount of trouble it seemed to you, you were having in the first half? Um, yeah, I feel like <clears throat> UConn did a great job of disrupting us. Um, we did have a lot of turnovers, which is something that we've been trying to work on the whole season. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, UConn executed their game plan very well, and they came out with the win. Lindsay? Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. Um, Kennedy, I have a two-parter for you. Do, you. do you have a COVID year, technically? Do you know? I was told I do not. OK. So you end your college career in the same state you started it in. I know it's weird, but there were probably a lot of Kennedy Brown fans in the stands today. Just what was it like to play here at the end? Yeah, um, I mean. We played here last year in a Thanksgiving tournament, and so I got to see, you know, some familiar faces then and again this year. So um, it's nice to see those people and reconnect um, for sure. Um, honestly, I, w I wasn't thinking about that too much, really just was focused on our team and where I'm at now um, and, you know, um, trying to leave it all out on the floor. Uh, Martin Heinzelman, Duke Chronicle. Sort of um, for both of you guys, what's it meant to you guys uh, to watch sort of your your young teammates, sort of how they've grown and evolved all throughout this year? What's that meant to you? All? I know seeing seeing our young our younger uh, team uh, just develop over the course of the season has been really has been really awesome. I know for me, uh, we get to come again next year and try to get back to the same stage that we are here and hopefully go farther. Um, I know the beginning of the season was a little iffy at first, but seeing them grow so much, uh, it's just been awesome to see, and I'm super excited for next season. Yeah, um, I mean, it's been amazing to watch the growth um, that these freshmen and everyone really um, throughout this whole season, I couldn't be more proud of them and just the composure they've showed, um, having to kind of step up as a freshman and play a really big role for this team. So I'm really excited for them um, moving forward and excited to watch them um, and really just thankful that I was able to be a part of this year. In front. Um, Bella Munson with the next um, for both of you. I know obviously not the result you wanted, but how do you feel about your defense and the energy that you put on the court throughout the game that did seem to frustrate UConn at times? I know I'm super proud of us. I feel like our game plan from the beginning was to disrupt and uh, make things hard for them. And I think towards the end of the game, we fought back as hard as we can. And I feel like our defense showed. Yeah, I mean, that's something we've prided ourselves on all season. Um, it's you know, not going to change in this program. Um, it's a staple for us. And so being able to you know, make things tough and kind of, like Reagan said, disrupt a little bit of their normal flow was really the goal. 
Like Garrett Spooner with the Duke Chronicle for both of you guys. Um, you guys were down as much as 20 during this game, fought back in the last five minutes to cut to within five. What was the team's mindset there with those last five minutes, just keep pushing and ended up cutting it to almost a one possession deficit? Yeah, I feel like our mindset was to just keep fighting. Um, everything was on the line. We had to put everything, like all we had on the line. So our mindset was just to keep fighting and to keep pushing. Yeah, I think that's kind of been our mindset all season is just to compete um, until, you know, there's no time on the clock. And so we still had time um, to make a run, make a push. And so that was really, really the mindset going into, you know, that last quarter was to just try and cut it um, as close as we could. Back here. Uh, this, this question is for Kennedy. Um, you've had an incredible career, so a career to be you know, extremely proud of. And I know that, like at this moment, you're probably not, you know, thinking about that. You're probably thinking about like how could we have done better. But looking back on your incredible career, what it is, what are some of the moments that you cherish the most, and some things that you're gonna, you know, hold on for the rest of your life? Because, you know, you got you got your sister. You know, they're gonna be there for you for the rest of your life, right? You know, it doesn't it doesn't end here, right? And so I was just curious, you know, what you're gonna cherish the most, what you're gonna miss the most, and what's next for you. Yeah, um, <laughs> definitely had a lot of ups and downs throughout my career. Um, I'm really thankful to have ended it here at Duke um, with amazing people by my side. I couldn't have chosen better people, honestly. Um, and so these last two years have been really special for me. Um, and I'm, I'll miss the people the most, honestly. Um, getting to come in every day and work to get better and to teach and learn. Um, <laughs> has been really special for me this year. I think especially this group is um, a really special group and I'm excited for them in the future um, to watch them grow and I'll continue to be their number one fans, you know. Um, we'll definitely come back and visit and cheer them on, you know, 100%. Um, so yeah, it's the people for me and the people make the place. And so I think that's really my, my career has been um, made special because of the people. Other questions for our student athletes? Thank you both very much for your time. Appreciate it. And congratulations on a great season. All right, the floor is open uh, to, for questions to Coach. Start over here. Uh, Martin Heiselman, Duke Chronicle. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, you guys sort of had a tough time scoring, especially down low in that first half. What do you think made it so tough to sort of get inside and get those sort of high percentage shots that you guys like to take? I think it was, it was just crowded in there, uh, you know, the, the whole night. Uh, so when we, we did get touches in the paint, uh, there was multiple players in there. Uh, they did a great job of, of bringing, you know, multiple players when we got catches. And, um, you know, it, it flustered us um, at, at different times. And, and then our inability to finish down there, um, I thought, hurt us. When we did get touches, uh, we, we missed a lot of layups. And a uh, little bit uncharacteristic for us, but um, you know the rhythm we never really got uh, going until late. Uh, so I would just say that it was just crowded in there uh, was was probably the biggest difference. Um, Bella Munson, with the next, you obviously mentioned that UConn executed their game plan really well. Was there any sort of tactical adjustments you wanted to make on the offensive end to try and get more buckets, or, or was it just you know hitting those layups that didn't fall, like you said? Yeah, I think the whole goal of offense is to manufacture quality looks. Um, and obviously, when you're in the middle of the game, uh, you're, you're feeling out what the other team's doing and, and then trying to find a way to do that. Um, so uh, for us, I thought, our quality, our shot quality in the second half was a lot better than the first half. I thought we got some open, 
open shots, not just layups, but open threes as well, um, and some open pull-ups. And we, we just didn't hit enough of them. I mean, um, you hate to boil it down to something that simple, but we didn't hit a lot of them. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. I think uh, any time you struggle like this on the offensive end like we did, I think both teams deserve their share of the credit. I think they did a great job of making it difficult for us. And I think we did a poor job when we did get opportunities, whether it was converting in transition. We had a lot of two-on-ones and three-on-ones that we, we fumbled and we did not finish. And those are points that are valuable that you need to convert on. So um, through the course of the game, uh, just trying to find ways to settle ourselves um, and uh, try to get some quality looks. Um, you know, we had an open pull-up jumper by Reagan and an open layup by Jaden late to cut it to three, and we missed both of them. You know, and, and those, those shots, I'm not pointing that out. Reagan and Jaden were great, you know, but that's kind of the kind of night it was for us. And, and like I said, they had a little something to do with that. Um, you said you were trying to settle your team. Was there anything in particular you told them to try and to settle them or – was it just kind of letting them grow into the game because they're relatively young? Yeah, I mean, I thought initially I was trying to let them grow into the game because it was the first Sweet 16 for everybody on our roster, and, and we, were, we were scattered to start, okay? We, we did not look like ourselves. Um, the issue was it was everybody. You know, a lot of times normally, like, is there one player or two players, you kind of can pull them out and put someone else in and settle, and it was like all of them. And, and so I, I couldn't sub them all you know we need to have five players that's a rule I think out there so uh that I was trying to to let them settle and and then we dug ourselves a little bit of a hole but you know at the end of the first quarter I just I always try to just say to them like hey here's where we are you know with all that said at the end of the first quarter it was 10 to 6 we're down four points and so for me it was just reminding them of where we were in the game you know, what the deficit was, and let's just try to string some quality possessions together. Lindsay? Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Kara, to that point, you know, your program can build off this, and a lot of good things can come from having this experience. Do you have that perspective? Can you have that perspective now, or is it just frustrating because you lost? I, I think... Um, I, I, I always toggle between, like, short-term and long-term. Um, I think that's probably most coaches in programs because you're, you're looking at what your immediate emotions are and, and, and needs are of the players, and then long-term of what you're trying to do. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of my group. I mean, uh, we lost seven of our top nine from last year. And we were the youngest team in the ACC. We played freshmen more minutes than any team in the league. And, um, you know, we're able to, to be competitive and, and win some big games and, and make it to this point. Um, so I have emotions right now, but honestly, they're positive emotions more than, more than negative ones. Um, just the type of year it was, how great a group they were to coach. Um, and, uh, you know, our future is really bright uh, with with our young players, and, and yeah, they, they will learn from this, will grow from this. Um, we're welcoming in a great freshman class uh, in the fall, and um, I think this experience will will help motivate them uh, in, in a good way to try and try and get back to the stage again. Coach, congratulations on name great. and affiliation, please. Oh, Vivek Kumar with Texas Athletics. Sorry about that. Um, you had a great season, you know, sorry about the tough loss today. But as you said, you know, you said that you had a lot of positive emotions right now and you got a phenomenal class coming in. Um, can you just talk about, like, what you're telling, like, your upperclassmen right now? Just to, you know, because this may be the end of this chapter, but it's not the end of your relationship with them, I'm sure. And so I'm just wondering, like, what are you telling them right now? You know, to just kind of help them through this because, you know, this is, this is a chapter, but it's, it's not over after this. And helping them understand that what they're doing right now is going to make an impact in the long run as well. 
And so I was wondering what you're telling them right now. I mean, I haven't had a ton of time to talk to them yet, um, but uh, Camilla and Kennedy are two seniors that won't be back with us next year. Um, honestly, I just thank them. I thank them for uh, picking Duke, you know, to, to come, um, for picking me to be their coach, um, for everything that they've uh, taught our younger players, um, how they've helped lead our team on and off the floor this year. So I'm just really thankful um, that I've had the opportunity to coach both of those young women. Um, they're amazing, and they're going to do amazing things in their in their lives. And um, so, yeah, that was more of just thanking them and, and um, you know, have a special relationship with each of them. Um, and, you know, I know they're going to be, like Kennedy said, you know, like she's going to, they're going to be always a presence in my life, and I'm always going to be a presence in their life. And um, hopefully in, their, in between their busy schedules when they graduate, they'll be able to come back to some games or if we go near where they live. Hi, Coach Garrett Spooner, Duke Chronicle. Um, I was wondering, you touched on that you guys were the youngest team in the ACC. Can you talk about specific um, areas of development that you saw bet between your freshmen, Jane and Alucci, this season? Jane and Alucci grew in every area. I mean, um, just from their knowledge, overall basketball knowledge, um, to understanding like schemes and game plans at the college level, understanding scouts. Uh, understanding our playbook and what they're trying, what we're trying to achieve um, in certain plays, and so the growth was was just massive for both of those two players. And um, they're 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 just sponges. They're learning. They they want to be good players, and they're growing each time out. And I'm just proud proud of both of them. Um, you know, we we depended on both of them a lot um, in these in every game, and so to see them continue to grow in their role and take more ownership. Um, you know, I think that bodes well for us next year with our freshman group. They got a lot of experience. I'll throw Delaney in there as well. I thought she had a fantastic year for us. Um, and they're just going to be, they're so much more aware now. You know, when they come in as freshmen, they don't even know what they don't know. And they're so much more aware of why certain things matter um, and, you know, how focused you have to be and disciplined you have to be. And I just look forward to more time with them. I'm thankful I have three more years with them, and um, I love those three. They're, they're fun to coach. All right, we are to the end of our time. Coach, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scheduled for tomorrow real quick. Uh, USC will begin at 9.30 uh, with the head coach followed by student athletes. UConn at 10.45 followed by student athletes. Uh, tip off at noon. Have a good night, everyone. Ha, ha, ha.